Hello and welcome. In this short presentation, I will introduce how to map BACnet to OPC UA using the information model specified by the OPC Foundation and BACnet Interest Group Europe. My name is Frank Schubert. I'm with Back of Automation and uh, responsible for marketing and training and building automation. I'm currently a member of the advisory board in the Backnet Interest Group Europe and one of the two chairmen of this working group specifying the information mapping model. A few words about Backnet. Backnet was founded in 1987 by the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers, ASHRAE. Backnet is a language for building automation to present data from heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, but of course also from systems like life safety alarms, audit trail systems, elevators or access control systems. Backnet is maintained by the ASHRAE in SSPC 135, also known as the Backnet Committee. SSPC 135 started in 1987 to specify the Backnet standard and Backnet is under continuous development by this association in an open working group. Backnet International and Backnet Interest Group Bureau are the two driving forces to market the Backnet standard worldwide. And last but not least, BACnet is international standard in the ISO norm 16484 part 5 and part 6. BACnet specifies a total of 8 different network media, including the IP protocol. 38 application services are used to transport the data from simple reading to writing up to file transfer or alarm transmission. There, at the moment, there are 55 backnet objects um, specified to represent the data from building automation systems. Last but not least, backnet specifies procedures, how to prioritize commands, how to backup and restore systems, or um, presenting state text information, for example. More than 950 vendors have already subscribed for getting a vendor ID and are known as backnet manufacturers worldwide. The current standard has more than 1,500 pages in total. The information model, how to connect BACnet to OPC UA, is simply a data model where we specified how to present the BACnet objects and their properties and map this into the enterprise systems using the OPC UA structures. In every communication protocol, you of course need to specify the network media, the services, how to transport the data, and the data itself. This picture shows the mapping overview. From left to right, we see the backnet objects, which contain so-called properties like the text information, the present value, events and alarms. The mapping profile now specifies how to bring this data into the OPC UA data structures on the right-hand side. The information model does not mandate which networks to use. Most likely it will be BACnet IP, but also BACnet on a serial line may be possible. This is up to the implementer. The same applies to the services. We don't mandate how the data is retrieved. This may be polling or the implementer may use change of value. In the specification, we identified five different areas to map. At first, of course, the data itself, so the BACnet objects and properties are mapped into OPC UA object types. In building automation, it's essential to also process alarms and events. These are mapped into OPC UA alarms and conditions. Logging is as well a typical application in building automation. Trend or events may be logged, so these are presented into OPC UA historical access. Data structures are mapped to OPC UA data structures and last but not least, the engineering units from BACnet are mapped into the OPC UA engineering units. In this picture, we see a BACnet object, in this case, an analog input object with its properties. On the right-hand side, you find a short overview about which properties are presented from building automation. This includes the reference of the object, so the name and the ID, the present value, which is most likely the most important information, but of course also information like the description text, the limits, the units, the range, and of course the alarm status of this object. In BACnet devices, the objects are flat in, with no hierarchy information, even though 
there's an option called Structured View, which may be applied to BACnet devices to present the user hierarchy, so the uh, facility manager's view to the data points. In OPC UA, we already have structured data types, so we can use this mapping here to map the structured data into the OPC UA structures. This picture shows the overview of how to map the BACnet objects into OPC UA data structures. And in this picture, the event and alarm properties are mapped into the OPC UA event and alarm data. OPC UA allows for type hierarchies and inheritance, and wherever possible, we use these two features, which are actually not present in BACnet, but in the mapping specification, we use these capabilities to make it easier to derive from base data types. This picture shows how to map the information from a BACnet analog input object and the properties into the OPC UA types. We also specified specific types which are named BACnet, uh, then followed by the type name. This picture shows the mapping from a BACnet analog input object into OPC UA types, where we specified type definitions uh, which are not present in OPC UA so far. Those are named within BACnet and then followed by the type definition. To group data points, we use the aggregation feature of OPC UA. So wherever possible to group certain properties, for example, for alarms, uh, we specify types which aggregate all properties of the BACnet object belonging to this alarm. A device is represented in BACnet through the device object. We connected different methods to the device object. For example, in BACnet it's possible to create objects dynamically or delete objects dynamically. So we added these methods to the device object to allow access to command a BACnet device from the OPC UA side. The event alarm representation um, is shown in this picture. BACnet uses a so-called notification class object where processes being informed about this alarm may subscribe or may unsubscribe if they don't want this alarm. So a typical OPC UA mapping gateway will likely subscribe to this notification class objects and retrieve alarms being uh, detected inside the BACnet objects. Last but not least, mapping the engineering units was a little bit a challenge in this uh, project. OPC UA has a total of more than 1,300 engineering units, where BACnet only specifies about 200 engineering units. This table shows how the BACnet engineering units are mapped into the OPC UA engineering units using an Excel spreadsheet file. Some data points in BACnet are a little bit specific. Um, they are so-called choices. A choice may be a collection of different data types combined to a single one. In this case, like a date list entry, it can be a single date, it can be a date range or a week and day, which is a combination of the weeks of the month and the days. So this required an OPC UA support for so-called unions, um, which uh, allows to map these data types, which are presented from BACnet as choices into the OPC UA unions. We already received information that the company um, implemented this uh, mapping and information model. The company Connexsoft from Munich sent us this uh, presentation and this overview shows how a typical gateway implementation may look like implementing the information model. So BACnet devices are connected to gateway which acts as a BACnet client in the middle and presenting this data to OPC UA following the specification in the information model. And this may be presented to enterprise systems for data monitoring, for analysis or for event and alarm processes in uh, enterprise systems. So the working group likes to thank all the companies who send their uh, employees as volunteers into the working group. We like to thank uh, the ASHRAE, OPC Foundation and BACnet Interest Group for their support. ASHRAE was very su supportive. They allowed us to copy up to 30% of the BACnet standard, even though there was no need for this. So we like to thank all supporting parties here, which made this specification possible and uh, which sent their individuals to these meetings. 
So if you asked where to get this document, simply follow the link shown here on the Big EU website. This document is available for free, so this is also license free, so everybody is invited to use this specification for implementing a connectivity between Backnet and OPC. There are no license fees involved, so this is free of charge and may be used by everybody to implement a gateway solution. If you need support, the working group is uh, happy to help you. So you may write directly to the two chairmen, Matthias or me. Uh, you can also go through the Backnet Interest Group website to find us. And last but, last but not least, the OPC Foundation has a landing page showing this collaboration between the Backnet Interest Group Europe and OPC Foundation. And the working groups are expecting that this collaboration will continue in the next few years. Thanks for watching this presentation. If there are any queries left, don't hesitate to contact us.